I guess uh, Meshkov definitely uh, covered a lot about uh, the entire blockchain and how exactly uh, a blockchain works. So uh, I guess I'll be spending more time on the application part since uh, the whole point of uh, using Scorex is to be focusing on uh, the application side of things instead of uh, focusing on the nitty gritty detail of the lower level transaction consensus, all those things. Uh, so a little bit of uh, Topple project. Uh, it is an open source project. Uh, the goal of it is to build a decentralized uh, credit scoring system for small and medium sized businesses uh, overseas, so in developing countries. Um, the, the goal there is, is to fill this gap between international microfinancing and a huge corporate debt. Since uh, there is this clear gap for small and medium enterprises, say like a mining company or something in, in Ghana uh, seeking funding, but uh, the bank there uh, has a tremendous uh, interest rate for the loans that they're issuing, typically uh, 30 to 40 percent. So uh, you can imagine how difficult it is to uh, secure a, a loan there. The goal there is to kind of present the companies uh, onto the platform and present the companies to uh, PE firms and uh, development banks uh, in the developing country, uh, in the developed country. So uh, I guess just talk a little bit about uh, why uh, we are using Scorex. Uh, I guess the first reason is that uh, the platform needs to be public and uh, the, the, I guess the entire concept itself does not require uh, super performance. Uh, public blockchain itself has never been a uh, performant uh, period. So you can achieve certain like very fast transaction speed uh, with a private blockchain setup uh, but in this case, we're, we're talking about uh, bringing transparency, uh, democratizing this information about companies uh, overseas. We, we would like it to be public. And the other part of it is that we do have a uh, uh, privacy requirement. So uh, for the example of Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, Every single transaction is public because uh, these transactions are validated by the entire network. Um, so anything you do is basically uh, seen by all the validators who are running uh, full nodes, as uh, Meshkov mentioned earlier. Uh, so you essentially, the public key that you're showing to the network is not really private in the sense that if I can figure out your uh, pattern of spending, pattern of transactions, I can essentially figure out who you are. And, and that's, that's how uh, a lot of people are able to trace certain account holder uh, real identity based on like, you know, say, say, say that I spent a hundred bucks, uh, you know, today at uh, 3 a.m. And there's only like two or three transactions at that time that matches this amount. Uh, then people will be able to pretty much figure out uh, who actually uh, or who, who actually submitted that transaction, right? So there are uh, privacy uh, blockchains out there. Uh, for example, Monero, who uses this uh, scheme of ring signature, and uh, actually it's a uh, it's a ring CT uh, confidential transaction. A scheme and uh, there's also uh, Zcash which uses uh, ZK snark but uh, I guess I can talk about both a little bit uh, so so what topo does is that the, the the reason we seek privacy is because for an investment firm for for a PE firm to be investing in companies they, they want to kind of preserve their investment strategies so I mean investment firm A doesn't want to share secrets with investment firm firm B. If, you're, if every single transaction on the blockchain is public, basically everyone can see what's going on, then that is not a good thing, right? However, what they want to see is they want to uh, kind of verify certain companies. So, so say that, uh, this, a good example would be, uh, uh, how should I say, a, a, a reference check when you get a new job, right? Uh, I don't have to know 
exactly uh, who, who my competitor company hires, but I do want to see that you actually worked for uh, the company that you claim to be. Uh, so this, this, this requirement there is so that uh, an, a, a mining company, say in Ghana, uh, would like to uh, get seek, say, say like seek future funding from uh, Morgan Stanley or, or, or something like that. But uh, Morgan Stanley doesn't, uh, well, Morgan Stanley do want to see who uh, this mining company had dealing, previous dealing with, say that he, he probably uh, secured a profit sharing agreement with uh, some other bank or something. Uh, but, you know, some other bank doesn't want to really see that. So this is like a very unique uh, privacy implementation that is not really uh, out there on the, on the entire cryptocurrency community. Uh, so the closest thing that we find is some, some kind of scheme that is that paired up with a uh, ring signature uh, along with the designated verifier scheme. So this is some, some crazy crypto stuff I, I don't really uh, know a lot about, but uh, those are fairly academic and hasn't been implemented yet. So that was the reason that we uh, didn't go with Ethereum or, or anything else. We, we wanted to be able to uh, customize the trend transaction to be able to preserve privacy uh, for investors and also give certain like ability for uh, one investor to verify uh, previous dealings. Uh, so, so that was the reason that uh, we went with Scorex is that there's a, this special need. So if, if you are, I guess, if you're just building an app for consumers or anything, there's really no need for you to be looking at like those private stuff. Um, other than, I mean, you, you can always just go with Ethereum and write, write Solidity contract. Well, Solidity also has its own uh, downfall and its own issues. But, um, you know, Scores is a, this unique thing for, it's kind of like a niche for people that are willing to, I guess, experiment and doing research. Uh, for academics, uh, it, it has a huge value since it, you don't have to worry about uh, the networking part, for example, uh, the message passing, the how, how states are, are applied, but it allows you to be able to kind of customize certain part of it. Say, say for example, I think Meshkov mentioned about uh, this hybrid chain, which is this example of uh, unique consensus scheme where you have one proof of works block followed by another proof of stake block. So this is like a, a fairly interesting scheme. And if you want to swap it out to like completely just uh, to be uh, proof of work or proof of work combined with some other uh, unique uh, consensus scheme that you come up with that, that you think of that is really good, you can easily swap it out since uh, everything is modular. Uh, the consensus part is just the, the minor part. So you modify that part and then you're able to kind of create a completely new blockchain there. Um, and I think another reason that, that we, we picked uh, Scorex was that our development team was fairly small and uh, we only have two developers uh, at that time. So uh, I think Bitcoin at, that, at this point has 80,000 lines of code. I'm not exactly sure, but that's, but there are, there are a lot of uh, lines of code uh, for Bitcoin and for Ethereum as well, since Ethereum has its own uh, smart contract engine, uh, this, this Ethereum virtual machine uh, built into the blockchain itself. And, and, and they don't really have any documentations on like, oh, here, here's our uh, architecture on how we built our blockchain. There, there is nothing like that, but the Scorex gr uh, props for them is that they, they do have a uh, nice tutorial for Scorex too. I think although it's a little bit outdated, but uh, the key concepts are, are there. The, the four parts, uh, the state, the vault, the history, and the mempool. Uh, these are kind of the things that, these are the core concept that makes every blockchain a blockchain. And and that by, by kind of modularizing each part of it, uh, you're able to quickly understand uh, at a very low level what is exactly going on uh, with uh, the blockchain that you're building. 
And I think these are kind of the, the concerns that we had at the time. And I think Scorex filled, uh, fulfilled pretty much every single uh, requirement there. And that was the reason that I guess we, we didn't pick um, Ethereum or, or anything else. Because um, I guess there, there are uh, integration effort between Zcash and Ethereum. I think the Metropolis release is coming out soon. Um, so, so what that does is that it, it creates this, it, it will, Ethereum virtual machine will basically implement this uh, cryptographic primitive uh, that's, that is uh, used in uh, Zcash. So what, what Zcash does is that it has this, it, it, it is a private preserving transaction. So I, I think a good example would be uh, telling you that I have a lot of money without showing me uh, w without showing you how much money I have exactly. So what I can do is that I can prove that to you by buying anything that you want, right? Anything that you can come up with, I can just buy it. So, so that, that proves that I have a lot of money, right? Uh, so, so that kind of uh, scheme is something called a uh, zero knowledge proof, except it's interactive uh, in the sense that like you tell me to buy something and I'll buy it. Uh, in the case of Zcash, they have a, another uh, algorithm, what it does is that it, it kind of just proves everything uh, algorithmically uh, and non-interactively in the sense that I, I present you some kind of proof and you by running this uh, uh, specific ZK snark binary circuit that has been created, uh, you will be able to verify that I actually have the money, but you don't really know how much money I have exactly. Uh, so I can send money to people without telling people how much money uh, I'm actually sending. Uh, so that's kind of the thing. But the, the downside of it is that to create those binary circuit, to create those uh, different uh, proofs, uh, I guess a, 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 this, this proof can be, just, you can think of it as, like, as simple as like uh, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, right? If, if I, I need to prove to you that uh, one plus one equals to two without telling you one plus one equals to, to two. So, you, so what this the, translating to code is that you can kind of create proofs for any arbitrary code that that you run. If I feeding like an input to a function and some output comes out, I, I can I can kind of just prove this uh, to you without actually uh, running this function at all. Uh, so. Uh, to, to be able to do this arbitrarily, you need to have a very uh, trusted setup in which sense, in, in which like a couple people needs to uh, share this uh, secret key that everyone needs to destroy afterwards. And if, if like everyone keeps this key, then you're pretty much screwed. So I think you, you, can, you can read a lot about this uh, at uh, Zcash on how they created their, their opening ceremony stuff where they created their binary circuit and uh, generated the first block and stuff. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, interesting aspects of it, but this is really heavyweight and it's still like a bleeding edge research area where uh, a lot of research, uh, generating those proofs takes like minutes, 10 minutes or something just to prove some simple thing like I sent you some money that somehow other people can't really see uh, how much money that, that I'm sending. So imagine like when you're talking about a piece of code that you need to prove uh, how much time it takes uh, there. So that was kind of the reason that we kind of went away with uh, from this uh, ZK snark, uh, th this snark uh, approach uh, in terms of pr uh, preserving privacy and stuff. Um, so I think, I think that's pretty much uh, uh, how we are using, I guess I, I talked about how, uh, why we picked Scorex. I guess uh, the current progress, I guess, is, is that we only, we had two developers and we started off uh, this project in, I think, I think the real development started in March, I would say. Uh, and we're able to create this, uh, and this is kind of like a custom thing where we swapped out the consensus algorithm into a proof of stake algorithm, and we also uh, implemented like five or, or six different uh, transactions uh, that modifies the state differently to carry out this entire process of uh, creating a profit sharing agreement between 
an investor and a company. Uh, so uh, the, it, it's, it's still going. We do have a test net uh, on GitHub. And I think uh, if you go to our website, you can just scroll down, look at our, our GitHub, or, or if you have any questions and stuff, uh, feel free to email me or anything. But I guess uh, I think that pretty much concludes this uh, talk, I was just, just to uh, showcase how awesome ScoreX2 is for, you know, for special uh, niche needs that you have. Uh, but I'm welcome any questions that we have here. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, are, are you aware of any other uh, companies who are using it now? Uh, I think as I think as as Meshkal said, uh, Waves platform mm -hmm. is is using it, and um, uh, I think so. So Waves platform is basically this this platform that allows you to create arbitrary tokens, right? You you can you can create like a like a Doge token on on uh, Waves, and you kind of just give it to people, and so people will have like digital ownerships on like a particular token uh, for uh, for uh, Waves platform. And I think Ethereum Classic as yeah 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 yeah, yeah. May maybe you want to <laughs> add something. <laughs> yeah, I can add uh, yeah, um, Waves, uh, you know, it's actually now do not use uh, Scorex as a dependency. They uh, forked from our, co our code and um, they like, started a year ago. And uh, actually, they started by uh, uh, at the beginning, that was just our code, uh, our uh, implementation of testnet of some features we, we started. Well, they have rewritten almost everything. Because uh, you know they do not need this uh, flexibility, this abstractions we we have. They have concrete implementation of concrete blockchain. They need to, to be uh, very uh, you know um, efficient. Uh, they need to, uh, they all to work uh, like good. Yeah, um, the idea of the project is uh, quite uh, simple: is to launch any kind of token. Uh, your, of your own code token, you can launch your, my favorite token, uh, you can tokenize everything. Uh, it's, it will take you like, I don't know, one minute uh, to choose just the name, uh, description, uh, number of coins you are going to launch. You'll have your own cryptocurrency on top of Waves platform. They also have a, a decentralized uh, exchange building so as soon as you launch a token you can uh, trade it uh, without uh, not, not any but uh, without trust to uh, exchange so exchange do not control the money because it's a big issue now in cryptocurrencies exchanges are broken uh, one and one and uh, a few exchanges a year are broken, a lot of people lose their money. Um, in this approach, the exchange do not control the money. So, and actually they cover like, I don't know, maybe 95% of Ethereum uh, smart contracts uh, usability. So most, mostly people use uh, smart contracts to create their own token. Uh, in Ethereum, uh, uh, that's the only good use case I know actually. <laughs> 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 and uh, as soon as this is uh, you now specialized, it's uh, you know, <coughs> it's do it much much more efficient. It's not a general purpose platform uh, to create this uh, this concrete uh, idea to create tokens uh, to send them to, to people. Uh, yeah, it's maybe quite. Um, a good example for you, I, 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 as far as I understand, you are all Scala developers. Uh, it's a good example of Scala blockchain implementation. Uh, check it and uh, try it. Uh, it's a bit different because it's now do not use Corux. So they have their own features, their own vision, how blockchain should look like. Uh, it's quite a good uh, example to uh, research, <coughs> to, to, to check. And they kept it modularized, or they have they have they messed up the modularization? 
Well, they have some modelization, but uh, you'll probably have to ask them. Yeah. <laughs> you'll yeah, have yeah, to probably ask I, them. I'm not uh, I'm <laughs> not a developer yet. <laughs> to ask them, yeah. I know more or less how how it works. Yeah, and the second the good example of scalar code and cryptocurrency is Mantis client for Ethereum Classic. Uh, it's also use some parts of uh, Scorus. Uh, but uh, it's also a separate uh, idea. It's also good, good, good thing to just to, to try to play with the blockchains on Scala and Ethereum, uh, Ethereum Classic uh, client called Matches X. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think yeah. So I think Ethereum Classic is probably uh, the biggest one because uh, they I think they use part of it, but not all of it. I think last time I checked, uh, they. Yeah, they, 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 they have certain parts are from like the score, like certain parts they kind of just did all, but, but they're all under like uh, the IOHK, uh, uh, this big uh, umbrella. Uh, so uh, IOHK also had like a bunch of other cool stuff. I'm, I'm just such a fanboy. <laughs> they have, a, <laughs> what is it? They, they have the first provably secure proof of stakes thing called uh, Ouroboros. Uh, uh, I think that was going to be, I, that is already used in, uh, what is it called? The Cardano platform or something? Yeah, so so this, um, yeah, so I was just basically, basically this like, I wouldn't say company, is it company? This is kind of research institute that kind of just does like cutting edge research on blockchain stuff. They have a bunch of like papers that are peer reviewed and, and pretty, I, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I'm also pretty, pro probably biased, so uh, given that, uh, I mean, Ethereum Foundation haven't really uh, published anything out regarding their uh, Casper stuff, uh, who knows when they're actually going to switch to proof of stake and what is gonna happen there. So, I mean, I don't know, um, but yeah, uh, any other questions? So, uh, so what I learned about this developing world application, right? yeah. I'm kind of relative newbie in the, in the blockchain space, right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of grok the general concepts like consensus. So my initial thought was, you know, uh, like the main problem of, with investment in the developing world that they steal your money, right? So yep. basically, and the, you know, as opposed to the US, not the random people, the governments can steal your money. Mm -hmm. The ministers can steal your money. They yep. take all the money and go to London, right? Yeah. So the question is, um, it immediately occurred to me that consensus mechanism seems like a good way to actually prevent this by say, let's say, you know, you like, you know, all the people in the country give money through taxes to road repair project, mm -hmm. and you know, basically they all want the roads to be built, not the minister of roads to take all the money and go mm -hmm. to London. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, can you? Uh, so apparently, like you're solving different problem at this point, but yeah. but would you envision that you can use a consensus mechanism to essentially uh, ensure that certain kind of transactions are not happening? And let's say you know if everybody wants the roads to be built, the majority should be consulted before the money can be used for anything else. Yeah. So uh, the, the the question is, uh, is it is it possible to you know ensure that the money that you put in onto the platform actually does what it does? Uh, so I think the, the answer there is that I think blockchain being uh, started off as a uh, trustless platform, uh, the, the good part of it is the correct use of it is, is whenever you have something that has the problem of, of trust where like two parties don't really trust each other. So um, although it's not performant publicly uh, for, the, for the public chain, I kind of want to, uh, I guess, uh, reiterate this this point uh, it is very good for anything that involves uh, trust so for example uh, say that I I want to I, I I'm willing to perform a particular service say like fixing your uh, your uh, uh, sink or something only if you paid me whatever amount of Bitcoin so uh, there are those uh, on, on the blockchain it's very easy it's it's a very a good way to uh, do these escrow service. It's kind of like you kind of just put the money in on, on the chain. It is locked away in some account and, and, until uh, two party or three parties all agreed upon certain things. And, and nobody will be able to uh, take away your money unless certain like uh, criterias uh, are, are met. And 
Obviously, this doesn't solve the problem of like, you know, social engineering attack where you know, I somehow get a hold of your, your private key or some, somehow I manipulated you into sending money to, to a particular uh, bad contract. But, but that's kind of the, the land of public chain that we're, we're living in, is that uh, you need to be very careful of uh, what, you actually, uh, what you're actually doing with your money. Uh, and if, if you accidentally somehow like, made a mistake, then there's, there's no going back uh, uh, until there's like, if, if there is a hard fork uh, from the foundation or, uh, or some other like, you know, developer groups that, that is actually willing to you know, roll back the chain for a particular hack or, or, or certain, certain things. I mean, this, this part is very controversial. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> uh, there, there are such instances happening. Uh, but uh, there are, so, so I, I think the, the point is there, there is that uh, with the smart contract, with the, the emergence of uh, the blockchain tech, tech technology, you will see more and more things moving to, uh, to those uh, kind of thing that doesn't really rely on a particular uh, central authority. So I think the, a very good example is that some people are kind of exploring this uh, you know, universal income kind of thing on, on blockchain. Uh, basically, you kind of just like deposit some money uh, to a particular contract or a particular chain and, and they kind of just distribute the, di distribute the, the money to everybody. Uh, they're, they're, it's kind of still experimental, but I mean, I, I think the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, Blockchain as a, tech, 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 as a technology has a lot of hype, but uh, the reality is probably not as, uh, as spectacular as you, you think. So uh, the hype there is, uh, is only going to make, your, uh, make you disappointed. So I guess uh, look at, look at, the, look at the, the truth of it, look at the, the bottom level of the thing. It is uh, the lower the expectation, I guess. <laughs> there are a lot of talks, there are, there are a lot of people talking about, oh, blockchain can do this, blockchain can, can do that. What if we do this on the blockchain? Uh, but the thing is that they, they, a lot of the things are still experimental. It is still a very, uh, how should I say it? Uh, technology in beta, you are like, if you made some mistake or if the developers made some like mistake, you might lose your money, so. Um, that's uh, kind of my take on it. So, quick follow-up question. So, when you, when you were describing the scroll count, I came up with a solution how to fix the roles, right? So, let's say, I mean, how many parties can be technically? Can you have, you know, the whole population of the country, a party to the contract, versus the government on the other side, right? So, basically, you put the money in the scroll, and you say, you know, the, as you know, the, you know, like two thirds of the population of the country agrees that the roles were built, the money will be transferred. Mm -hmm. from the scroll account to the road building company. So, uh, I mean, technically, is there a limitation of the size of the number of people uh, signing contracts? I think at this point, uh, not really, since I think a lot of the, the Ethereum contract, if you've been following the blockchain space, uh, ICOs have, I guess, have, have gone crazy. Well, there are some, uh, you know, also controversial aspect of it. But basically, the, the point, the, the goal, I guess, the initial, uh, point of it is to be able to uh, give everyone the ability to purchase a particular utility token so that you can use a particular you know, software product that they built uh, on the blockchain. So there are, uh, at this point, there are no limit on how many people there are on it, but blockchain scaling is still a, uh, a uh, research topic. Uh, nobody has figured out how to scale the blockchain to you know a thousand transactions per second, uh, public uh, for 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 public chain, uh, at least uh, yet. So to be able to compete with like the network of like Visa or Mastercard, there's still a long way to go, but uh, it's getting there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am a little more in uh, research about voting, actually. And I can tell you concrete numbers for it. Uh, if you want, uh, you may see today um, talk from Patrick McCorry uh, to Tusk about uh, voting, and uh, he mentioned uh, 
if you use Ethereum contract as, as this, uh, and you want uh, private uh, voting, so you do not want your votes to be public. So the good property of uh, voting that uh, we all vote, uh, we know, we can check that our vote is included, is included to result, we can check that it is included to correct uh, answer, we are actually voted, but nobody else can uh, link my vote to uh, results, uh, to, to someone I voted. And uh, that's all. If you use uh, Ethereum contract uh, as this, uh, with this privacy property, it's like uh, 50 participants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just 50 participants, it's crazy, it's, uh, it's not usable at all. And that reward will cost you like $10 and... Uh, yeah, I, and I, I guess I can add, add a little bit to that yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, actually I'm a bit involved in this uh, research with uh, um, Professor Hongsheng from Richmond University here, and uh, Professor Bin uh, Zhou from Doncaster University. He's um, uh, one of the directors of e-voting system in Estonia. He's quite experienced with this. Um, well, actually, as I can see from this discussion, uh, there are a lot of different uh, schemes how to achieve this good voting. Uh, there are schemes uh, like to vote in like 1,000 people, 10,000 people, maybe 100,000 of people uh, with some limitations, but it actually doesn't scale linearly. It's, it's not quadratic, but it's not linear. And uh, there is no existing scheme to uh, perform this e-voting with privacy and uh, other goods properties for 1 million people, 10 million people. So uh, for some local voting in the university, in your company, it's possible to uh, do everything uh, with good properties, with privacy, with verifiable votes and so on, but uh, not uh, like a government voting or you know, something like this. Yeah, I, I guess, I, guess I, I, I forgot to mention, which is that uh, for, for a lot of those like, you know, you want to get your vote immediately. Case uh, at least for the blockchain, uh, for for the public chain, there's there's this thing called like gas for Ethereum or transaction fee for for Bitcoin. So there are certain like you know front running things that the miners always do. It's like a perverse incentive for the miners. But a lot of times you the 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 the, the fact that the block size is limited kind of limits how. Uh, whose vote gets picked first and whose transaction gets actually validated. So the ideal case is that you know everyone can, can do that, but in reality when you want to like, kind of just collect everything immediately, uh, when you have this uh, urgency pulling there, uh, certain economic uh, concerns kicks in where like you know people are going to pay an insane amount of money just to do some, some stuff. Um, and, and that's kind of the, the, the thing that adds to all of those uh, issues there. Um. Any other questions? Thank you.